Hello, my name is Rob Littlewood from Sidor Technologies and in this short video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a new imaging device called the MM Pad. And this is a direct detection imaging device for hard x-rays and the feature that we're going to talk about today is the fact that it has this ultra wide dynamic range. So, it's called the MM Pad and the pad part of the name stands for pixelated array detector. And what that basically means is that it has some sensing medium that has a pixelated readout. And they're typically arranged in small modules with an ASIC behind them. Um, one of the modules that you can see on screen and one that I'm holding up here is shown on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, these can be arranged as individual devices, um, but because of the way the electronics is packaged, we can also tile them together, as you see in the central image, to form larger arrays and larger active areas. The other thing about these devices are that they are direct detectors. So uh, that is opposed to indirect detectors where you might have some kind of scintillating medium, which converts the X-rays into visible light before then being imaged by a visible light camera. And in that indirect detection process, there's a lot of steps um, and you lose things like quantum efficiency, you lose uh, the point spread function starts to spread out. Um, and the temporal response is not as good either. Whereas in direct detection, the sensing medium, which is normally something like silicon or cadmium telluride, which we have both available, directly takes the photons and then converts them into charge before being pulled out and read. So the MM part of the name uh, stands for mixed mode. And what that means is that in each individual pixel, we have a combination of analog and digital technology which results in us having an integrating front end of the pixel and then a charge removal circuit in the back end, which is essentially counting uh, the charge and the number of photons that are coming into the device. And we'll dig into this a little bit deeper now by looking at some of the current uh, technologies available and how this fits in and solves uh, some extra problems. So, in current devices, we typically talk about integrating detectors or photon counting detectors. And a good analogy for uh, a pixel and its architecture and the way it senses photons that's been used in the past is that a pixel is like a bucket and the photons coming into the bucket are like the water. Um, and the architecture of an integrating detector is as shown on the screen here where photons come into the integrating pixel, charge is accumulated, and then eventually it's read out. If too much water comes in and we fill the bucket up or too many photons come in, then we've reached our full well capacity and then the device is saturated. So in this example, simple example, you can see a kind of pixelated array with a, a blob in the middle there that represents a photon. Um, digitally, what this looks like, just to keep the maths easy, we've done zero to 10, um, but we get some charge at the pixel locally. That charge in an integrating detector um, might have some distribution over a few pixels, as you can see there, and then it might have some read noise and, and other forms of noise uh, spread around the area of the detector. But essentially, you integrate up that charge and then read it out at the end of the frame. In a photon counting uh, detector, the same initial step is happening. So we're getting charge into the detector, um, it's being converted into some signal and we would see this kind of distribution but we have an extra layer here where we have a comparator in the pixel and this is typically set at some threshold level which generally relates to the energy of the x-rays that you're interested in so it may be that that comparator is set just below or typically at about 50 percent of the signal of a single photon and then as soon as one photon comes in we go over the threshold uh, that allows us to count a photon and then we make a count. So in the e example of how things are digitized again, you see the same kind of layout with signal, but let's say our threshold is set at maybe eight. Um, so we've got one pixel there that has gone over that threshold and in a photon counting detector, you would read out the data and see this kind of arrangement here where you have zeros all over the image and then one photon strike, which is very nice. Um, and it gives you this kind of uh, noiseless image um, because it's hardware filtered for the noise. 
Some of the trade-offs associated with photon counting detectors though are, for example, if your point spread function is larger, so the charge cloud is larger, but actually in reality, maybe your, your pixels are smaller for the same charge cloud. And in that situation, we have this kind of arrangement here where um, the charge cloud is spread over a few pixels. And you can see in the digitized uh, image on the right hand side, the signal is actually shared out among the pixels. So we never reach that threshold of 10 as we did before in a single pixel. And if we've got our counter threshold set at eight, the problem with this situation is that we don't actually sense the photon. So this can be a problem when you have charge sharing and you're constantly pushing for smaller and smaller pixels with detectors. At the other end of the scale with photon counting detectors, another problem that exists is when we have too many photons all arriving at the same time. Now, the analogy here of the, the, uh, the water and the photons is, is kind of carried over. So in this case, we have a guy who's collected one photon of charge. He wants to move that out and click the counter and count uh, one photon strike. In that process of him moving the charge away, there is a delay time and there's a dead time. So if another photon arrives at the same time that he's removing that, that uh, count of a photon, we're gonna have a missed count. And so the problem that happens, especially in synchrotrons, where you get really, really high arrival rates of photons, that you don't get a linear increase uh, in the measured number of photons versus the actual arrival rate of photons. So you can see here that the response should be completely linear for the detector, but actually as more and more photons are arriving with higher arrival rates, we start to see this droop and this tail off as the, uh, the count rate limits start to set in. And in actual fact, in synchrotrons, this is even worse. Um, so typically we talk about the flux of a beamline and that's quoted in a number in photons per second. And so it's, uh, it's an average over the unit time. And count rates of detectors are typically quoted in counts per second. But if you actually think about the duty cycle of a synchrotron, it's a lot worse. In a synchrotron, you have bunches or pulses of light that are arriving with some time separation. And this is uh, the duty cycle. And it may be that actually the light itself all arrives within a really small bunch of the order of tens of picoseconds. So what that means is that the instantaneous arrival rate of photons is even worse compared to this average number that we typically quote. So the MM pad is this new architecture that deals with things slightly differently. And again, using the water analogy, what we have is a small front end integrator, which has a large charge removal bucket in the background. And so what's happening is that as photons arrive, um, we can accumulate them into the front end pixel. But if multiple photons arrive at the same time, this isn't a problem because as we're pulling charge away, we can simultaneously still be collecting photons. So this image here or the video here shows you an illustration of how that works. You have an integrating front end with some threshold where the charge removal circuit kicks in and pulls away a certain chunk of uh, signal. And then at the end, we have this large accumulation bucket at the back end, which then after the frame is finished, we make a comparison and compare how many photons that we had in that frame. So this has two real uh, standout effects. One is that the response is very, very linear with uh, additional arrival of photons, and we don't get this tail off that we see with photon counting detectors. But then the other one is that the full well capacity is now not limited by the front end pixel full well capacity. We have this guy in the background here with the large bucket, which you can see has a much larger full well capacity. And because our noise is below one photon, that essentially equates to the fact that our dynamic range is increased. So we end up with a detector which has a huge dynamic range or a huge equivalent count rate when compared to photon counting detectors. So the devices that we have at the moment uh, that exist have been tested at a number of beamlines. Um, and recently we did a test at the APS, at the HP CAT. And some of the team there are from CIDOR and also from Cornell University, who were the originators of this design of detector. And we have commercialized the device and, and made it available for the wider community. 
So we have detectors available in both silicon and CAD telluride. Um, we went to the HP CAT and we did a number of different measurements, but one that stands out and that we'll look at here today was a test where we had a diamond with diamond powder on top of it, and then the diamond was spun round and rotated round with a motor. And this is a bit of a strange experiment, but the idea is that it illustrates the real capability and dynamic range of this detector, where in the sequences of images you can see on the screen here, going from top to bottom, you can see the Bragg peak, the really bright Bragg peak from the diamond, which is actually resolved, this is not saturated. And then simultaneously, you can see the powdered diffraction rings in the image. Now, this is a, a bit of a, a, an interesting experiment, but this really shows you that what we can do is capture single photon strikes in one area of the detector with huge, huge exposures and, and, uh, to intensity at another area of the detector without saturation. And an, ex an example of where this might be interesting is actually we could image just the direct beam at the center of the detector whilst uh, imaging single photons. And we don't have to attenuate or beam stop or anything like that. So you can get all the phase information about your beam, intensity information about your beam, in the same frame as counting single photons, which is really, really appealing. So a quick summary is that the well depth, the full well depth of the uh, MMPAD pixel is about five times 10 to the seven photons at 8 keV. The noise is well below half a photon, and so we consider this as single photon sensitive. If we do want to compare this to counting detectors, then we can look at a number of an equivalent sustained count rate, which is essentially how many photons we can uh, add up and count in one second, and that is equivalent to five times 10 to the eight. There are other detectors on the market um, and around uh, in the community that use this active gain switching, and this is to achieve a similar thing. So they're still integrating detectors, and they're trying to extend the dynamic range. And this is all in a pursuit of as light sources are being upgraded and give us brighter and brighter sources. Uh, one thing to say is that the MM pad actually still has an order of magnitude higher than these active gain detectors in terms of its full well capacity and uh, dynamic range. As I mentioned, we can image the direct beam on the detector. So we can resolve the beam structure, beam shape, beam intensity, beam phase, all at the same time as having single photon strikes or rings at different areas of the detector. The device that you see on the screen there is an array of 512 by 512 pixels. We have it as individual modules and we can also configure other uh, arrangements as well. We have it available in both silicon for energies up to about 20 keV, but we also have CAD telluride versions for uh, higher energy applications as well. So, the MM pad uh, is a direct detection imaging device for hard X-rays. The real standout feature is the ultra wide dynamic range available. Um, and we can, in, in fact, image the direct beam of the synchrotron while still resolving individual photon strikes in the same frame. Uh, if you have any questions or you'd like some more information, please get in touch with us at Sidor, our, our website, or you can email us directly at info at Thanks very much.